If you're a long time subscriber to our channel, you probably recognize this 1967 Mustang convertible. We've done a ton of videos on this car, including a Ford Performance crate engine, a T5 swap, and most recently a full RideTech coilover suspension. Now, when we did that RideTech video, a lot of you questioned my sanity when I reinstalled the original drum brakes with that high-end suspension. I promise you at some point in the future we would upgrade the brakes, and that time is now. Today we're going to install a full Willwood disc brake conversion kit on our 67 Mustang convertible. So these are all the parts from Will we're going to install in our 67 convertible. Now this is not a complete kit. Basically this is individual kits we're putting together to give us a complete package for the car. We'll start over here with the front. So these are the Dynapro 6 piston ultralight front calipers with a 12.19 inch solid rotor. Now this is going to be a direct replacement for the front brakes whether they're disc or drum on your 67. We're required use of at least a 15 inch wheel for clearance. Now with the back, again, going with the Dynapro, these are going to be the four pistons with the internal parking brake. Again, direct replacement for the stock rear on our 67 Mustang. This includes all the necessary hardware for installation. You will want to pick up the correct brake lines as well, which are available from Willwood and here at CJ Pony Parts. The last part of the puzzle is the master cylinder and proportioning valve. This is their die cast aluminum master cylinder with a black e-coat finish with a 15 16th bore. Again, direct replacement for the factory master cylinder, much better pressure, much better fluid distribution. This installation is going to require a lift or a jack and jack stands and a well-stocked toolbox. As far as specialty tools, drum brake tools, and line wrenches will make it a lot easier. Now we're doing the installation in three parts. We're going to do the front brake conversion, then we'll do the rear brake conversion, and finally the master cylinder conversion. So first thing to do, get the car up in the air, get the wheel off, we're going to remove the cap here, and start disassembling our factory drums. Now we're going to move the cotter pin. If in our case it appears these brakes have been gone through somewhat recently, so pretty new, they should come apart not too bad. Let's connect the hose from the brake line. Make sure you have a drip pan below, you will lose some fluid here. Next, remove the retainer for the hose. All right, now we're gonna remove the backing plate nuts from the spindle. Having trouble getting our backing plate off, we're just going to take apart everything, make it a little bit easier. Okay, with everything apart, we're going to take a wire brush now and just clean this surface up. This is where the mounting bracket's going to go for the disc brakes. There's a little bit of corrosion on it. We want it as clean as possible before we begin the installation. I'll grab the caliper mounting brackets and the hardware. We want to line up these two holes here, and it's going to be these four holes. Long bolt goes to the bottom, and then the three shorter ones. Now we'll tighten them down. We'll go back through and torque them down in a minute. These nuts will cut into the threads of the bolt to tighten them down, so there is no Loctite needed. We'll torque them to 30 foot pounds. Okay, prepping the hub assembly, we're going to install the studs. Now we're doing five by four and a half, which will be the ones closer to the center. We're actually just going to start these a couple turns and we're going to put Loctite all of them before we tighten them down. 
going to run the most of the way in here before we put our Loctite on. We've been torqued these at 77 foot pound. You'll never be able to do it by hand by holding it. So grab your wheel face down, just line them up. That'll hold it so you can torque it. Okay, now we're ready to assemble our two piece rotor. Put the hat on the bottom here. Some red Loctite on all of these. Just run them down by hand until they're snug. It's in a pretty low torque spec on these. We're going to torque them to 25 foot pound and go in a crisscross pattern. Okay, with the rotor assembled, we're moving back to the hub now. Now we're gonna put the bearings, and to do that, you need to grease them up. Now you can work it through by hand. Pick up one of these things. They're pretty cheap. We got this local auto parts store today, actually. I think it was like 20 or 25 bucks. Good thing to have if you're doing bearings on any kind of old vehicle. So basically all you do is push that down to there. Thread this back on. And just push. Pull this out, all this excess. Make sure you get it inside and out. Then rub a little bit around the race. And seat it. Okay, put the seal on top. Carefully tap it into place. Okay, now we're ready to assemble the hub with the rotor. Make sure this basically goes pushed towards the outside. And we put some more red Loctite in. Once again, we're going to use the wheel to hold the assembly because we have to torque it to 45 foot pound. And the same cross pattern. Okay, before we put our new rotor on, we're going to go up here to the spindle. Just get as much of the old grease off as we can. Now grease this back up. Slide the rotor and hub on. Now we're going to grease this small outer bearing. It's going to be a little harder to push it through. Put a little in the race. So the outer nut, you're going to use the factory hardware here. This washer, they do include a new one specific to the kit. All right, now we're going to tighten it up. And now finally we can install cotter pin. Okay, and then the outer cap actually threads on. Just get it hand tight. Well, before we mount our caliper, we're just gonna give the rotor a quick clean. Okay, now we're ready to get our calipers ready to be installed, which means we have to put the brake pads on them. Before you go too far, make sure you have the correct caliper. They are side specific. You'll see an arrow right above the wheel wood. 
I'm gonna make sure when that is on the car, it's gonna mount in the front, it's gonna follow the rotation of the wheel. Okay, to put the pads into our caliper, you see those little springs in there. Grab pliers, squeeze, remove the retaining ring, then remove the stud. A part of the installation process with the Will Woods is shimming the caliper to get it set up properly. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to start with two shims. So when we bolt this to the bracket, bolt will come in from the back, and there'll be two shims on each side just like that. We'll see how centered that gets it and then shim as needed. Okay, so we have it on with two shims. Basically, you want to look at the gap between the pads and the rotor on each side. We can see that we're shallow on this side, a little bit too far out on this side. So we're going to move one shim, see how close it gets us. All right, so once you have the shim set up properly, you're going to loosen the caliper bolts just enough to get some red Loctite on them, and then tighten them in torque to 40 foot-pounds. All right, once it's shimmed correctly, this is what it should look like. You want the gaps to be as close to even as possible. Okay, ready to install the stainless steel lines. Now, these do not come with the front brake kit, so make sure when you order the kit, you order the lines as well. They come with two different adapters. Find the correct adapter for your car. We'll start by putting that onto the line. Okay, we'll connect the adapter now to our stock brake line. Allow the retainer clip. Put a little bit of seal on this. Now we're going to thread the fitting in the back of the caliper. Okay, now we can connect the line and then tighten it down. Ready to move on to the other side. Just like in the front, we'll start by removing the drum. Again, just like the front, we're going to start by taking things apart. The axle will come out for this installation, so we're going to remove the retainer now. You want to keep this original hardware handy, you will need it later. Get the axle out of the way, we're going to remove the emergency brake line and the normal brake line here. We're going to move the backing plate. I'm going to squeeze the e-brake retainer here. Put everything apart. to clean the flange up a little bit first. To install our Willwood brakes, this factory retaining plate is going to have to be removed. Now, you have two options here. You have a press, you can actually press the bearings off, replace them if you need to, and do it that way. 
If not, you have to carefully cut this to remove it from the axle. All right, so this is gonna be the new retainer. What we're gonna do here is basically take our new bracket with our e-brake attached to it. That will go like that. And this will go in here. That'll send there as a retainer and reinstall it with the factory hardware. Okay, once with the factory studs in from the back and you have that plate lined up, reinstall the factory nuts. Okay, now we're gonna put the rotor on. Okay, with the rotor mounted, we're ready to work on the caliper. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is load the caliper. So we're gonna remove this retaining screw from the back, then remove the retainer. Load one. Make sure it's seated properly and reinstall the bolt. We put the caliper on and we're going to start with two shims to see how close it gets as to getting everything centered. So what you're going to do is put this on through here Then those go between the caliper and the bracket. It's going to go just like that once installed on the car. Here's what you want to look like when you're finished. I mean, you want to get it as perfect as possible. Don't worry if it's off slightly, but this is actually pretty good. You want it to be centered between the pads and the rotor. Now what we're going to do is actually just loosen these up just enough to get some Loctite on them and torque them down. Now, if you happen to have a brake tube bender, it good, but even if not, what we're gonna do now is just get this line up out of the way. Now, if you can basically carefully bend this by hand, you just wanna have it kinda up here, make sure you don't kink it, have it sort of facing forward out of the way. Okay, now we're gonna put our fitting into the caliper. We put a little sealant on that end, nothing else really needs any. I'll connect our line. Again, these lines are not included with the kit. So you do order your front and disc conversion, make sure you order the lines too. Okay, now we're gonna put the adapter on. Okay, I'm gonna tighten this down. Okay, then you wanna repeat the process on the other side. Then we'll talk about the e-brake and then move forward and work on the master cylinder. Now, the internal parking brake in the Willwood Disc Brake Conversion Kit is a pole style that requires a hook style cable. The original style one is a pin style, so it will not work. Now, Willwood does make a kit to convert your factory style brake to work with these calipers. In our case, we're actually playing on a completely different brake in the future, so we're just going to leave this alone for now, and next time out, we'll tackle that problem. Okay, with the brakes done, we're back up front. Now, what we're gonna do is start by removing our factory dual bowl master cylinder. So, we're gonna place it with our Willwood piece. We have to also add a proportioning valve while we're here. So again, the first step though is to get the factory piece removed and out of the car.
Okay, now we're going to work on the firewall bolts. Right, so the master center is out with the exception of the push rod. Now the push rod connects to your brake pedal. To get that off, we have to go under the dash. There's no way we can show you this because it's really buried up next to the column. But follow the push rod through. On the pedal, you're going to see the brake light switch and the push rod. All you do is pull off that little retaining clip, then pull it off the pedal. We'll be able to remove it from under the hood. The push rod came out anyway. Okay, so with the master cylinder out of the way, the next thing we have to remove is the factory distribution block. Now, this is going to get replaced by the proportioning valve, because now that we're four-wheel disc, we have to adjust the bias between the front and rear brakes. All these lines are going to have to come off this factory distribution valve, and then we're going to connect the proportioning valve, hopefully, in the factory location. Lines are off, now it's gonna remove the mounting bolt. Okay, if the line's off, we can actually remove the valve now. Okay, with the distribution block off, we're gonna move these two lines. We actually broke them free on the car, so it should be fairly easy to get off. Where we reason these, we can get rid of this. Okay, to prepare the master cylinder to go in the car, the first thing you have to do is actually bench bleed. Now to do that, it includes these small fittings that go in where your normal metal fittings would go for your brake line. You're gonna put those in, loop them back inside the master cylinder, and we're gonna put some fluid in, and work the push rod a little bit, just to push some fluid through the master cylinder before we install it. We have the proportion valve already down in the place. The proportion valve is easy. Basically, you've got two front outputs and a rear output. You can connect it to your stock lines. Then it includes this bracket. And then this will basically bolt up where the master cylinder is and all go in together. All right, so that was difficult to see, and it is difficult to do. I mean, it's very, very tight quarters working in here, but this is what you want it to look like when it's finished. We have the two lines included with the Willwood kit that go from our master cylinder down to our proportioning valve. All the factory lines take the proportioning valve on the bottom. There is a secondary plug right here on the front of the proportioning valve for your brake light switch. Since we have our factory switch under the dash, we're not gonna be using that. You could actually use it for a light, or you can use it to replace your factory one if you don't wanna stick with the factory. Before we connect to the pedal and start bleeding the system, it's going to put a little more fluid in here. And make sure when you are bleeding the brakes, the worst thing that can happen is for this to run dry, then you have to bench bleed it again. Okay, with everything done under the hood, I'm now going to jump underneath the dash here, connect the push rod to our brake pedal, and then make some adjustments before we bleed our brakes. We're going to start bleeding the brakes. Now, as usual, you're going to start with the bleeders furthest away from the master cylinder and work your way forward. Now, these rear calipers are universal. So there's four bleeders on them. The only two you have to worry about though are the two on the top. Okay, with the brakes bled, now we're going to install the cap on the master cylinder. Obviously, make sure you top it off first.
Okay, and the last step here is the proportioning valve. Now this will have to be adjusted based on how you drive and driving habits and stuff like that. But what you're gonna do is thread it all the way out, then thread it all the way in, and then go to about halfway, and that's gonna be your starting point for setting up your brakes. Now at this point, your installation is basically finished. Now a few things about this. You just replaced the entire braking system on your car. So check the brakes a few times up in the air, make sure they're working properly. Then get the wheels and tires on the car, get it on the ground, and again, one or two miles an hour. Just back it up, forward, make sure it stops like it's supposed to. Get the car outside, again, 10 miles an hour, 15 tops. Make sure the brakes work properly before you even consider taking it out on the road. Once the brakes are working properly, you're gonna bed in the rotors and pads according to Willwood's instructions. Now, as far as this installation goes, this is time consuming. As far as the time, it's even tough to say, but it's a weekend project for sure. Follow this video, follow the instructions, you'll be back on the road in no time.